It's so easy to run to certain things, to run to certain people, to run to certain places, to do these things so that it can take this burden off of our back, off of our shoulders. But in reality, it's not removing anything. It's just staying there and it's just suppressing what is there. But Jesus, he declared many things in the scriptures. But one thing he said that he is the burden bearer, essentially. Right. So in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, he was speaking to the multitudes. And this is what he said. Verse 28. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So the first thing he calls, he says, come to me. He, this is a public, this is a free call to everyone who is laboring, who is weary, who is burdened down by whatever they're going through, by the weight of life, by the weight of guilt, by the weight of shame, by the weight of their sin. And he offers a promise. He says, I will give you rest. And we know one thing that Jesus, he was sinless. It said, he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we can be the righteousness of God. So when Jesus says a thing, He means it. He's not a man that he shall lie because at the end of the day, he's still God. He's the son of God. He's Messiah and he's Lord of Lords, right? So when he says this, I will give you rest, he's offering a promise to those who are weary and are laboring and are heavy laden. So we're going to dig into these words. It says, all you who labor. So the word labor, if we go to the Greek, it's the word kopiao, which literally means to toil and to grow weary. Now this could be unique to you what are you toiling in is it to provide for your family is it provide for yourself are you toiling to be made right with god by your own righteousness by your own works by your own merit because he provides something for that it's the gospel that you couldn't be righteous that we've already sinned and fallen short but when he died on the cross that burden he took it upon himself as a sacrifice and we can receive it by faith and the next word i want to dig into is the word heavy laden It's the word for tizo in the Greek, and it means to be loaded down by a burden. So many of you might be burdened down by relationships, broken relationships, bondage, trauma, addictions. Many are loaded down by that stuff. But he says he will take it off your shoulders. He will give you that rest. He will give you that peace. And here's the thing. He differentiates it because in John, I believe 15 or 16, he says, I give you a peace, not that the world gives, but that only he can give. That his peace is everlasting and you enter, when you enter into God's rest, it's an eternal rest. It's an eternal rest for the soul to where you are no longer carrying the burden. And I'm going to get into this, go into the next verse. So verse 29, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your soul. So right there, we see another promise. He said the same thing he said before. You will find rest for your soul. So if your soul is thirsting for rest, if your soul is thirsting for a hope, only Jesus can fill it. Whatever your soul is thirsting for, the answer is Jesus. You may not even know it, but that's who you're looking for. That's what you're looking for. It's peace within the soul. And we get that peace when we receive what he's done on the cross by faith. That's how we get that peace. John 6, 35, Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall never hunger. Whoever believes in me will never thirst. He gives you that satisfaction in your soul. A yoke was something used in agriculture when farmers would get two oxen, right? They'd put it over the necks of the oxen and they would go so they can stay in sync with one another and they would ultimately push whatever it was they were trying to carry. But something I noticed, it says oftentimes an older, much wiser ox was paired with a younger ox And the older ox would lead the way and teach the younger one. So wherever the older, the wiser, the experienced ox went, it would take a step forward. Then the younger one would do that. And they would stay completely in line. If it stopped, it stopped. If it went to the right, the younger one went to the right. And what Jesus is saying here is as you're paired, as you're yoked to him, he will lead you in that way. That when he says go, you go. When he says stop, be still, you be still. Because ultimately he is leading the way and you will get to where you need to get to when you're following him. In verse 30, he says this, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So I want to tell you in the world before Christ, I was yoked to other things. I was not yoked to Christ, but I was bound. I was chained. I was enslaved to my desires, to my flesh. I was chained to addiction, 
But Jesus, he destroys the yoke and he sets us free. In John 8, he says, who the son sets free is free indeed. So whatever thing you're yoked to, whatever thing you're, whatever thing you're burdened by, he can break that yoke. He can break that chain because when he was on the cross, he not only took our sins, but he defeated sin by raising from the grave. And Romans 6.10 says this, when he died, he died once to break the power of sin. But now that he lives, he lives for the glory of God. So enter into God's rest. You're only going to get this freedom from whatever you're going through, from sin, from bondage, from trauma. You're only going to get that healing, that peace, that inner rest for your soul through Jesus. So it doesn't come by running from him. Stop running from him. But surrender. Follow him. 